all our speakers and our amazing uh, attendees as well for, for today and for all the um, amazing talks that we have. Uh, to introduce myself, so I am Shada, I am Mashad Al Islam Ben Mahsan, I'm Senior Product Manager um, at Baker Hughes, and also I lead the diversity and inclusion uh, group in our corporate uh, in our corporate network for Middle East, North Africa, Turkey, and India. Uh, today, I'll be having with me in the panel, so um, amazing speakers. We'll have uh, Melissa again from IBM and Divya, uh, the HR manager from IBM as well, as well as Dr. Hala from um, Dr. Hala from GE, who is the director of uh, data science and analytics. And I will be starting with Melissa, since basically you started um, your talk talking about passion. And my question is, is kind of like, let's get more into kind of like personal side about your stories uh, during this panel. So what made you passionate about, about basically this field and about all data science and, 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 and really empowering people in data science? Yeah, so I think for me, I, I see data science as it's a wonderful and amazing um, career that has so many opportunities. Um, and I think that, you know, when I look especially um, across the, the global south, I do a lot of my, my work in, um, in Africa, for example, and I think there's so many opportunities to empower um, women and girls, to empower young people um, to discover their careers in technology, whether that's data science or, you know, anything else. And I think regardless of what field you go into, everybody needs to know about data and everybody needs to understand technology. So I think it has this, um, this power to um, really empower others to do many more things that they may not have ever dreamed was possible. And that's why I, I have the career I have and I do the work that I do, um, frankly, because it feels good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, Marissa. Um, the, the second question would be for, for Dr. Hala, and I would be really asking um, from the perspective of your career and basically um, the, all the stages that you had to go through, what did you find it basically most challenging or most rewarding being a woman in the field of data science? Actually, um... Of course, the most rewarding piece of it was the fact that I could see what the impact data science and in particular the pieces that I'm contributing to are making uh, to the industry, especially because I joined an industrial company, General Electric, and whatever I worked on, initially I was just uh, contributing as a software engineer, but whatever software I was contributing to, it had some major analytics engine to it, whether it was uh, simulating um, a power plant uh, behavior or um, a wind turbine, and the impact it was making in terms of automation and optimization, it was amazing to be a part of it. Uh, in terms of challenging pieces of it, I would say, um, as a woman, I, honestly, I never felt challenged, I would say, um, Perhaps it was related to the company I was uh, a part of. The challenge was very much from the technology and what we had in hand and what we did not. And we had to basically deal and solve the problems based on the technologies we had. And it uh, doesn't matter how much improvements out, are out there on the technology, you always wish that you had a bit more. Uh, so I would say the technology limits would be the challenges that I was facing. And then maybe actually the technology limits is, is also the, the kind of the challenging part of it is how to keep up to date with it, right? And how to be really always on the edge. Absolutely. And uh, you touched it very well, uh, Chada. I have just been thinking recently that from day one that I joined the company, I have always been in the learning um, journey. Okay. In particular, uh, the reason I became a data scientist of course, I have a computer science background and I took a lot of algorithms and a minor in math. And it goes back to uh, some of the discussions that some of our great speakers touched uh, based on. You need all those skill sets to become a data scientist, but I didn't start my career as a data scientist. Uh, but I had all the skills, most of them, in my bag. And by seeing how data and data science uh, is making an impact in the industry, I got encouraged to move towards that career path, of course, um, 
I remember taking the very course that the, the very first machine learning course in 2011 by Andrew Ong that later on um, founded uh, Coursera. And uh, I have always been in the uh, path of learning, whether it was online courses or reading material or trying things or working with my colleagues to do something extra as a project and just sink into the career that now I have the data science or scientist title. Absolutely, absolutely agree. No, uh, amazing personal insights, Dr. Hala. Thank you for that. Um, I would move now to uh, Divya, and basically I will come into the HR world uh, of yours, uh, Divya, if you may allow me. Um, the question would be for you is, um, what are we doing actually right in terms of getting more, attracting more women into the data science field, and what are we doing wrong? Like, how can we improve, and what can we do more into, into that? Sure. Uh, thank you, Shada. That's a great question. Um, and often something that, you know, we really need to keep our focus on all the time. I saw an article uh, this morning uh, and, and it mentioned that, you know, one of the major problems that women face, you know, particularly when they want to um, get into the profession at a very young age is that when they go to, you know, uh, classes that teach uh, coding or, or, you know, such skills, is that it is very, very male dominated. And, and there was a very, very impactful uh, personal insight from um, one of our other IBM uh, women leaders about how she sent her daughter, eight-year-old daughter to a Python coding class. And mm -hmm. uh, she did not want to go back there because you know, upon digging, she found out that the class was full of boys. And she did not have anybody who she could Support. probably relate to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I think that, was, that is really, really important because uh, we need to create a, a diverse environment where people all, from all sorts of backgrounds can come in and thrive. Um, and, and, and that's the thing that we need to keep focus on. Now, what we are doing well is, for example, you know, forums such as uh, these are bringing together like-minded women, like-minded strong women leaders, I would say, from all walks and spreading the word. So what we should probably be doing more of is uh, more education and more awareness around what the profession looks like and how women can contribute rather than trying to drop out and, and start doing um, you know, other generic roles and, and go deep into the technical domain right? and how it can help them advance their career. What we should keep doing is that we should uh, keep uh, fostering the community spirit and build as many communities as possible particularly um, you know, strong women leaders um, that have a lot of eminence because they are the ones that inspire uh, you know, the girls of today to be become women leaders of tomorrow. Awesome, that's amazing. Um, I would have basically one last question to all the three panelists and, and please pitch in to feel free to pitch in. What is one advice that a manager or a mentor of yours or a leader that actually have given to you throughout your career and it got stuck in your mind up all, all the way until today. So I, I'm happy to, to start. Um, I, I think for me, it was um, kind of really tying my, my uh, lightning talk um, together with the advice because I think that fueled a lot of um, where I am in, in my career now and that's identify what fires you up and do that and do that thing, whatever that thing may be, True. you know, incorporate purpose and passion, you know, into your job so that when you wake up in the morning, you know, you, you, you feel um, excited and, and passionate about whatever it is that you're, you're going to do so that you don't have a job that you're going to, and you're just showing up and doing that thing every day. Cause we spend so much time at work you know, how can it, you know, fuel our growth it and it's really a passion. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, 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 that's a very good, that's a very good point. Uh, what about you, Dr. Hala, Divya, anything to add in here? In my case, uh, I would say the advice has been in terms of uh, indirect encouragement of giving me opportunities. So I would say my colleagues and, um, uh, co-workers and managers uh, in, in the company that I worked for, they were always open to give me opportunities to try new projects and contribute more. And I would say that was just the best motivator for me. And uh, that was an indirect um, kind of positive uh, reinforcements that I got through the company. 
Awesome, awesome. What about you, Divya? Yeah, what sure. So um, <clears throat> interestingly, again, I'll pick up on a, an aspect from Dina's presentation because I think it resonates well with me is the pursuit of perfectionism. I once had a manager who's now a mentor and, and she's mm -hmm. awesome. You know, um, she's just an incredible uh, woman. And, and I was struggling with getting past, you know, I was very good with crunching the numbers, but telling the story was not a, a strong point. And I, and I struggled with it. I struggled with it. I struggled with it. And, you know, I said to her, I said, what can I do? I know the story. Um, why can't I tell it well? And she said, you know, just say what you need to say. Because guess what? If you don't know it, nobody else either. So to me, that was a, that was a, a lightning bulb moment that, so, you know, well, yeah, I mean, how many times will I bullshit? I don't think I will. But if I don't know it, I don't think anybody else will. So what's the worst that can happen? I mean, the worst that can happen is, okay, fine, you're wrong, right? But failing and learn, accepting to fail and, and not, being tried to be, not trying to be perfectionist about, you know, what we deliver, I think it's a really, really key thing that I learned. It really has helped me along my career. Absolutely. And I think one other point, actually, in the advice that you just mentioned is the importance of storytelling as well. As a data scientist, you need to have that skill of, of being able to actually, like, you know, produce some stories that are relevant to your clients, to your customers, and knowing really well how to articulate it. Absolutely. And, you know, this goes back to one of the things that I'd heard about, you know, Disney, that, you know, it, you don't, people will not remember what you told them. People will yes. not remember what you showed them. People will remember how you made them feel. And, and to me, that's really, really key. You know, when, when a presentation touches emotions, that's when people remember it and that's when it becomes real. No, that's, 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 a very, that's a very good point indeed. Thank you so much, Divya. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you, Dr. Hala, for your inputs and for uh, being with us today. Back to you, Anshel, and uh, I would like to basically uh, invite our audience as well to ask some questions for our second panelists um, here in the chat. So while we are in the break, you can feel free to think about some questions, put them in the chat. I will be taking on them uh, for the second panels. Thank you so much for your inputs. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you, Divya. Thanks. Back to you, Anshel. Thank you so much, Rada, and thanks to all the panel speakers. That was a really great panel today. So I think we can uh, have a short break now, and we can see you all in four to five minutes. And if you have any questions, you can see here, you can ask on the chat section, and we're more than happy to answer the questions and the speakers as well. And, and we just... We also have... Okay. Go ahead. We can go ahead, Susan. Yeah, I was just going to say, we've just started a poll and you may answer the questions in the poll and then we'll share the summary right at the start of the break. And that was an awesome first half of WIDS in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. I'm going to mention that we'll start at 10 minutes past the hour, as stated in the agenda. I'm going to share the agenda briefly, just as a reminder. Um, let me do that. Uh,
Okay, so 10 minutes past the hour. And please do answer the poll. That would be great. And we'll share the results of the poll. And please do ask any questions, introduce yourselves in the chat and, uh, and share the Twitter and YouTube link. We have a lot of viewers on, on YouTube as well. Hello. Hello. Uh, can I post my questions on chat? And will they be answered? Yeah, you can post any questions in chat. Yeah. I I did post one. Okay. Um, do you want to say it? Um. Uh, yes. Uh, I want to know. Uh, is it a good idea? to move into a business-centric role when you aim to become a data scientist? To have a business-centric role and then become a data scientist? Yes. Anyone want to take that? If someone from the panel or any data scientist want to take that question while we're on break? Seems like uh, people aren't uh, taking questions. They're having their break, getting their coffee. Um, but uh, let's see if, if somebody, I would say that many business, in fact, I will, I'll, I'll answer with my opinion. I think many roles now require data science background. So meaning some numeric uh, literacy. So most jobs now require numeric literacy so some elements of data science it doesn't so in a sense many jobs require data science skills including business ones so that would be my and and, uh, and also data science the intersection of data science with a business domain is very important a, a, a valued data scientist is one that can can know more than just the data science but knows knows a domain or works with people who are experts in a particular domain so yeah, I, <laughs> anyone else agree. want to answer i completely agree with susan so, sorry i need to um i have a big echo now um I, I completely agree with susan you really have to understand why you're doing something so the old model was to have a data scientist locked up in a room and saying here's all the data do whatever you want and that was a recipe for failure. Only now say, okay, no, we need to put the outcome, the business question first, and then ask ourselves, why are we doing this? Um, that's where we see actually results. So um, I think, yeah, people who know me already heard the story. Um, I like to compare it with cooking. And to be a good chef and to make a good meal, you have to start with the question now, like, why am I cooking? What am, what am I cooking for? Is it a birthday party? Do I make a cake? Or do I have friends coming over for dinner? Um, or is it just a quick snack for the kids at lunch? And, and with the outcome in question, you have to understand what are the ingredients you need? What, what is the data? And, and then you, you have um, the question of like, do I use a microwave, the oven, or um, what is the algorithm that I use? Um, so the, the business question is actually um, the most important driver. That's great, uh, Eva. I'm going to uh, give a final reminder to answer the poll questions. So please go ahead and answer the poll so I share the results. So if you haven't um, uh, answered, please do it now because I'm going to 
finish and they'll see what skills people learnt and what they find challenging and in in the COVID-19 and, and any any home practices. And the people who wrote something else in the answers, they will, as we go through the questions, we can uh, quickly ask you to write in the chat. So I'm going to end polling now. And this is it, done. I'm going to end polling and I'm going to share the results. So you should all be seeing the results now. Most people find no clear cutoff time from office work the biggest one if people had did something else what were they can write in the chat what their challenging thing is now and some something if there was something else that's uh, if, if they wish to share okay that's great to know no clear cut next one was what was um what good working from home practices stress management was the most popular with, with routines second and if people want to comment on that, they can do that on the chat. Oh, you can't see the results? Someone's saying we can't see the results. Is that true? And can anyone see the results? Okay, everyone can see. It's just Monaro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. It's not on the main screen. So. Oh, okay. It's on a pop up. Okay. Great. <laughs> okay. So the, the stress management was the. Okay, and if anyone has any remarks, um, please just say question two remark and make a remark. And then finally, what new skill? Work well, oh, a lot of self-improvement. I can tell you, I learned this two skills myself. One of them, thanks to Manar, which is doing polls in Zoom was one <laughs> skill I learned. Another is live streaming on YouTube. So, and that's thanks to Anshal. So. Those are my, my, I'm sharing what I learned. And uh, okay, so yeah, if anyone wants to qualify, um, please share in the chat. I'm going to stop sharing and we can get started now with the, with the next section. Thank you all to all the organizers and speakers and everything in part one. It was just amazing. Thank you. So over to part two. <laughs> Thank you and welcome back everybody who had a break. Um, I hope you enjoyed the first half and the second half definitely um, of similar quality. So I'm really excited about it. I also learned a new skill. I learned, um, I actually learned two new skills. I, I think I learned a lot of patience and I learned um, moving all my elderly family meet, uh, members onto cloud, Dropbox, Zoom, and I fixed the internet and my uncles, my parents, my mom, um, pretty much everywhere. <laughs> so I should get an extra salary from Telecom, I think. <laughs> um, so let me introduce our next 